Look, I gotta stay on assignment. Rebuking what's not in alignment. When you lose your life, then you'll find it. His word in the flow, so it's timeless. This for my brodies I grind with. I put it all on the line with. My team, we been kingdom minded. Get around us, watch your mind shift. Pick it up, switch it up, cut to the chase. Okay, brothers and sisters, blessings, blessings to you, grace and peace. So this teaching today is we talking about the tarot cards. So last time I did a update video uh, asking you guys about the tarot cards, um, the crystals, the smudging with the sage, burning sage. And so these are that's just three of them, but there's many more that fits into the same category this is what uh is considered new age you know this is new age stuff which is also i mean i guess that's just it's, it's another term of idolatry you know another an, another term of idolatry and it's connected to witchcraft you're trying to find some type of power some type of source or power outside of the power of God or outside of the word of God and any, any kind of power that you, that you have, or that you usurp outside of the word of God is considered to be the power of Satan. If it's not from the power of the Holy spirit, the power of God, then it's coming from the power of Satan coming from the power of demons and devils. So let's just get that clear up front. So, um, the first place I want to take you guys to is we're going to go to Wikipedia and their, I guess their history background slash definition of terror, tarot, or however you say it. So it says, I'm going to read it with y'all. The tarot is it, uh, first known as tri triumphy and later as Tarak Tarachi or Tarak is a pack of playing cards used from the mid 15th century in various parts of Europe to play games such as Italian Tarachini, French Tarot, and Austrian Con Conigrufen, many of which are still played today. In the late 18th century, some Tarot tarot decks began to be used for divination via tarot card reading and cart cartomancy leading to custom decks developed for such occult purposes okay so just from this just from this uh definition now this is wikipedia you can look it up and so this is wikipedia's and it's, it goes into detail about the history of these cards, but I just wanted to read that uh, that first little section about it because we don't have to go deep into the history like we I think we all can are able to put it together. This is something that, you know, is around in the 15th century and it was it was to play games originally. That's what it says. They was using it to play games, but uh, somewhere around the 18th century which is like the 1700s that it started being used for divination through tarot card reading. That's when it says via tarot card reading. They're saying that once they start using it through tarot card reading, now it's become divination. Okay. And so the reason this is important because you got many, uh, many believers or many, uh, professing Christians or people that believe in God, they believe in Jesus, that he died and he rose. And some, some of them, you know, profess that they confessed his name. They confess the name of Jesus. And they also believe in a heart, you know, and that they live a Christian lifestyle. It's a lot of them, you know, that's in that category. And they believe that there's nothing wrong with these cards. There's no, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, and that these are just uh, this is just something where you can interpret your future. You can or you can find out things about yourself or get to know your inner self or something of that nature, you know, and 
But what we want to do is as Christians, we want to, as followers of God, as followers or disciples of Jesus, we want to see what God has to say about these cards. Is it okay to use these cards? Is it okay to figure out what our future is going to be? Is that something that the Bible teaches okay to do? Is it against the Bible? Is it so there's question marks here? You know, some people don't know. So this is the point and reason why we had to go back to the history of, OK, where did these cards come from, you know, and what's involved with it. So we see that uh, once you start doing the tarot card reading, now it becomes divination. But let's figure that out. So what is divination? So we're going to go. We're going to go to put that up there. We're going to go to the Wikipedia of divination. It gives their definition and history of, you know, what divination is. It says divination from Latin divinar to foresee, to foretell, to predict, to prophesy related to divinous divine or to be inspired by a God. Uh, now, notice, I want you guys to uh, notice that it didn't say to be inspired by God or the God of the Bible, you know, the most high God, the, you know, the one and only creator of the heavens and the earth. But it said to be inspired by a God and it has a lowercase g. Well, we know in the Bible, when Paul says that Satan is the God of this world, they use the lowercase g because he's letting you know, yeah, he's the God of this world. But he's a he's a false God, you know, and he he has no real authority. Yeah, he yeah, he's a you know, he got dominion over this, but it's only the one and only living God is allowing this to happen. So I want you to notice that the definition of divination, what it's saying to foresee, to foretell, to predict, these are all different um w different words. As, and it also says to prophesy. Now, we know that that word prophesy is in the Bible. So I know what you're thinking. You got some people that's going to say, well, there you go. It says to prophesy. So they doing what the people in the Bible who prophesy, they doing the same thing that those people are doing. But I'm going to say, wait a minute. Let's, you know, let's put a put a stop on that for a second. And uh, let's see what God says about divination so now divination is a kind of a uh, kind of way to prophesy to have prophecy but is it the way that god uses so when god has prophets and those prophets they prophesy to people is that is that through the source of divination that they're prophesying or is it just prophecy? So does God see a distinction between divination and just regular prophecy? And that's what we have to figure out to, to see if this thing is really true or if it's not true. To see if this thing is okay to use or if it's not. Okay. So we, we see the definition here is to foresee, to foretell. And that's, uh, it, it, it goes hand in hand with uh, what, what we call a fortune teller. You know, they foretell, that's a fortune teller, or they foresee, you know, and they are practicing something that's involved with divination. So what we're going to do is we're going to see what God says about uh, divination in the Bible. So Deuteronomy 18. So before we read, what we're going to do is we're going to pray. I just pray that uh, God just reveal his word to us in this time that we're able to understand and comprehend these scriptures and uh, for what they say in their proper context. And so, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, O Lord. We bless the holy name of Jesus. Dear Father, we thank you for bringing us together today, dear Lord, to just dig into your word, O oh Lord, that we may gain understanding. We pray that your Holy Spirit come upon all of the hearts of everybody who watched this video, dear Lord, and just allow our spiritual eyes to be open, dear Lord. Allow our minds and our hearts to be awakened, dear Father. Um, 
We just pray that we get understanding, that we uh, gain discernment uh, through your holy scripture, that you allow us to uh, be reproved, O oh Lord, and that your word just inspires us and just gives us uh, everything we need, dear Lord, to continue following you and to continue to worship you uh, in the right manner, dear Lord, not veering from the path. Uh, we just pray that your word go forth. We know that uh, you said in your holy scriptures that your words will not come back void, but they will accomplish that which you sent it forth. And we believe in your promises and we thank you for everything you've done and everything that you're going to do in the holy name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Okay. So now we're going to, so this Deuteronomy chapter 18, starting at, we're going to start at verse 10. So it says, there shall not be found among you, anyone who burns his son or his daughter as an offering. Anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes or interprets omens or a sorcerer or a charmer or a medium or a necromancer or one who inquires of the dead. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord and because of these abominations, the Lord, your God is driving them out before you. The Lord, your God is driving them out before you. So as we read right there, uh, the author of this book, Moses, he's reading what, you know, the message God has given him. He's saying, hey, you shouldn't do, you know, none of this. Don't be practicing divination you know, not no telling fortunes, which is what we call fortune telling, interpreting omens um, or a sorcerer or a charmer, excuse me, a medium. A medium is like if you guys seen the TV shows where they will like I seen this on the Ricky Lake TV show a long time ago when I was a kid. And she would bring people on and they will like their family members say their grandmother be dead and the person can talk to the dead, you know, and they will be talking to their grandmother through that person. That's a medium. So he says, look, have nothing to do with any of those things. Those things are an abomination to the Lord. And what he say? Whoever does those things is an abomination to the Lord. The Lord your God is driving them out before you. So we see that divination is bad. Divination is a part of this group of things, which is some some form and shape of witchcraft stuff that uh, demons, you know, stuff that people who worship Satan, they do. And uh, a lot of people don't realize that the same way where we got so many Christians that worship God and they read their Bible, they go to church, you know, and they praise God, they do worship to God, give worship to God. You have people on the other side of that that does the same thing for Satan. They go to a church, they read the satanic Bible, they praise Satan through rituals and, you know, different things of that sort. And they also, they do spells and they do, you know, uh, chantings and omens and, you know, mediums talking to the dead and, you know, stuff like this. And they do divination, you know, all these different things. So this is something that's of the source of Satan is not of the source of God. And so that was just one example in the Bible, but I'm going to bring you guys to, uh, another example in the new Testament. In the book of Acts, let's see, how do I go there on here? Going to go to the book of Acts. Uh, okay, so go down the list to the book of Acts. And we're going to go to Acts chapter 16. And we're going to start at verse 16. Okay, I'm going to read. I want you guys to read along with me. As 
we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners much gain by fortune telling. 17. She followed Paul and us crying out, these men are servants of the most high God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. And this she kept doing for many days. Paul, having become greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of gain was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the rulers. And when they had brought them to the magistrates, they said, these men are Jews and they are disturbing our city. They advocate customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to accept or practice. Okay. I was going to keep going. I'm not going to keep going. I'm going to just stop right there. Now, what's going on here is this girl, they say uh, this slave girl, you know, she's here and she has this spirit of divination and she sees Paul and Silas. You know, these are servants of the most high God doing God's will. You know, they going out and you know, building and preaching the, the, the message of Jesus, death and resurrection and, you know, preaching the gospel. And this girl, she comes over and she's, you know, telling everybody, hey, you know, they, they come to preach the way of salvation <laughs> of the most high God, you know, and what it's doing is it's taken away from, uh, it's taken away from their ministry at that time. They kind of trying to be like, discreet about it at this at this particular time they're trying to be discreet they don't want everybody to know they just kind of want to get in and get out but she's making it hard for them and the scripture says she has the spirit of divination okay so right there that lets you know that divination you know is a spirit but it is not of god there's only one spirit that's of god and that's the holy spirit so any other spirit that's apart from the Holy Spirit is a spirit that comes from the devil or demons or, you know, whatever you want to call it, you know, so that girl had the spirit of divination and we already seen the definition of divination. We already seen that that's is fortune telling and it's, you know, uh, all, all those different names that it named, but it's something that's outside of God and outside of his word, which is his Holy scriptures, this Bible. It's outside of those things. So that's what I wanted to uh, bring to you. So for all of the many, many, many Christians or the many uh, professing Christians or the, the people who just believe in God and believe in Jesus, but they haven't they haven't yet became regenerated and born again with the spirit of God. But they're on the fence or they have questions and they want to know if this is OK. According to the Bible, divination is not okay, but it is something that is apart from God in um, his dealings and his work. But it's a work of demons and devils, you know, as we see here, a spirit of divination is opposed to the Holy Spirit of God, though they they oppose to each other. They're not on the same side. They're not on the same team. We see that through this scripture I read. Um through the last scripture in Deuteronomy 18, verse 10, you know, it said that, hey, have nothing to do with divination and fortune telling and all this stuff. And that's what this girl here is doing. She's fortune telling. And it says that she has a spirit of what? A spirit of divination. So through the scriptures, for anyone who believes the Bible, they believe the scriptures. So this alone is enough evidence for someone to acknowledge and say, okay, well, according to the Bible, divination is bad and tarot cards is a part of a divination. We see that when we looked at the Wikipedia. OK, so, you know, let's uh, go back to it. So we see uh, this, the Wikipedia of divination. We see it's to foretell, to predict, to prophesy. And it says to be inspired by a God. Well, that God, lowercase g, 
that's Satan. And we know that he's the God of this world. Okay. So, um, terror, when we go back to terror in the definition, you know, and it talks about <clears throat> from the 18th, uh, uh, in the late 18th century, some terror decks begin to be used for divination. So nowadays in how, how are they used by divination via terror card reading? So when you do tarot card readings, when you use these cards to read somebody or you say that I'm going to do a read for you, what you're doing is divination. It clearly says that right there. And we we see the definition of divination and we went through the scriptures and the scriptures tell you that divination is something that's not of God, but it's the opposite. It's the opposing uh, entity. And that's of Satan. That's of the devil. Okay. So I just, I, I'm explaining it like this because I want people to not be confused. I want to be able to explain it, you know, and break it, you know, explain it to a, a five-year-old. You know what I'm saying? I want it to be that easy and simple to understand, you know, because there's, this has been a long time confusion about uh, these, you know, not just a tarot card reading, but the crystals and the, um, you know, uh, all, all these different things, the sage and, you know, all these different things. So uh, what we want to do is we want to get clarification. And this is what we need the spirit of God for. And this is why we pray before we um, read the Bible, because we want clarification. We want our spiritual eyes to be open, to be enlightened, you know. And so that's the goal of all of this. I want to bring you guys to uh, this is called gotquestions.org this uh christian organization i don't know if they're a part of a denomination or not but i know you can ask questions at this website and they have like nine out of ten i seen them on point literally nine out of ten like questions that you ask about anything of the bible or about god they've been able to answer it and they've been on point you know and so and they talk about, you know, what does the Bible say about divination? You know, as we just read, we know what the Bible say. And it gives you the scriptures, Deuteronomy 18, 10. It gives you uh, 1 Samuel, you know, in 1 Samuel that was dealing with the uh, the medium. They was, um, who was it? King Saul. Uh, he went through the medium to talk to, to try to talk to the dead. And so, and then it gives Kings and Jeremiah and, you know, and then it gives Acts, the one that we just read in the book of Acts. So it's pretty much letting you know that, hey, divination is something that's of the devil. I'm going to read some of this. It says divination in any form is sin. It is not harmless entertainment or an alternate source of wisdom. Christians should avoid any practice related to divination, including fortune telling, astrology, witchcraft, tarot cards, necromancy, and spell casting. The spirit world is real, but is not innocent. According to the scripture, those spirits that are not the Holy Spirit or angels are evil spirits. And so that's what the Bible teach everybody is the Holy Spirit is that that is the only spirit and anything else that's considered a spirit is of the devil and is not of God. Okay. Christians need not fear the spirits involved in divination, neither are Christians to seek wisdom from them. The Christian's wisdom comes from God. And then it takes us to James chapter one, verse five. Let's see what it says. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given him. OK, so any of you Christians or any of you uh, professing Christians or any of you um, people who are on a fence or you know what I'm saying? And you believe that God is real. You believe that Jesus is real, but you don't know about these practices. You think that these practices are OK. We just went through all of the information that shows it's not OK. It's not okay with God. And so when you follow this path, there is, there's only a one way. There's not a, well, I could be saved and I could still do this. No, 
the Bible says we can't do this. I have nothing to do with this. Why? Because this is of a different spirit and it's not of the Holy Spirit. And so that's the reason why. So um, I just want to encourage anybody who uh, is confused about this. I had trouble with this. Just go over this video again. You know, go through those scriptures, pray about those scriptures, reread them, you know, double back on them, um, break them down, get the definitions of the word. Even if you had to go into the Hebrew and Greek lexicon and, you know, and you have to get the Greek and the Hebrew definitions, whatever it is you have to do, get a Bible dictionary, see what the Bible, you know, the, the Bible dictionary says about divination, whatever it is you have to do go and do your examine it because you don't want your life you don't want your life to be dependent upon this you know if you truly have a heart to serve God and to you know you want to know God and you want to have a authentic relationship with him and fellowship with him there's a there's a instruction there's a guideline that you have to follow and that guideline is laid out for you in the bible that's where it is. And so I just want to encourage everybody to uh, take heed to the word of God. It is true. It is pure. It is inerrant. No, nobody didn't twist it. Nobody didn't. Yes, people have tried to manipulate it, but it's been preserved all the way from way back when, you know, in the Bible days, all the way to right now today. It's been preserved, you know. And so I want to encourage you guys. Uh study this thing out, test all things by the spirit and the spirit is the spirit of God. I'm speaking of, you know, test all things by the spirit of God, test all things by the word of God. Don't just listen to what anybody says or, you know, what anybody predicts, but test that with what the Holy scripture says about that thing. And that's how, and that's how you will come out, uh, in the end, you know, with better results. So just have some prayer out of this. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for having this uh, study, dear Lord, in this video. We thank you uh, just for the people who have been admonished and the people who have been encouraged, dear Lord, the people who have been inspired. We just pray that your holy word, it just keeps building us up and just giving us strength. Dear Father, we just desire to know you and to have a relationship with you, Father. Uh, we know that you are the God of all gods and the king of all kings, and there is no other God. There is no other spirit, O oh Lord, other than your Holy Spirit, dear Father. And we just pray that all of the people who watch this video, anybody who is a part of uh, divination or tarot cards or any of these uh, different new age movements, dear Lord, that you just... Uh, 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 unharden their hearts, dear Lord, and just allow them to receive your holy word. Oh Lord, just allow them to receive your revelation, dear Father, through this study and through this video, dear Lord, that they may be, uh, minds and eyes may be awakened and open, dear Lord. Um, we know that your holy scriptures say those who answer a matter, uh, before, but be before it is, uh, even, finished or complete that it is foolishness to them it is shameful to them oh lord so we just pray that everyone does examine this and don't just wave it off just because of the title of the video so we just pray that bondage is broken chains are being broken of divination dear lord and that your people turn to you in repentance dear lord turn to you uh surrendering turn to you to submit to you dear father their will for your will we pray this in the precious name of your son jesus yashua hamashiach amen okay grace and peace to everybody blessings 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 till next time shalom